In this segment, we'll look at our alt versions of the standard, uh, uh, standard I.O. F open and F close calls, and also at several standard I.O. macros. Now, alt F open is our analog of uh, standard I.O.'s F open. It opens an alt file given the file name and a string describing the mode. In the code down here in altstudio.c, you can see that uh, lines 52 to 53 hunt alt files for an unused entry, one that has an FD of uh, minus one. So skipping over all the used entries, we find ultimately, we hope, an unused one. And assuming one is found, then lines 56 through 58 point RTN to it, start next at the beginning of its buffer, and set flags to show that it's open for reading if the mode starts with R. Otherwise, open for writing is simply assumed. Now on line 59, buff size gets zero if the file is open for reading since there are no buffered bytes read in as yet. Or it gets buff size if the file is open for writing since all buffer bytes are available for writing. Lines 60 through 61 actually open the file, calling the system open call, and save the file descriptor that results. Second parameter mode bits are set appropriately, and we'll get to a question on that in a moment. And then line 64, finally, um, returns an alt file pointer to the just initialized alt files element, uh, RTN, or returns null um, if there was any error. And if we do return a valid pointer, then we can use that pointer in other calls like alt get c and alt put c. And so here's question one. Look closely at the second parameter bit flag set up here uh, on line 61. If we open for writing, and if the file already exists, what will happen? And what will happen if it doesn't already exist? Coming back from a pause then, um, we open with mode O-trunk. So existing file content will get erased. We also open with O-create. So the file gets created if it doesn't already exist. And with permissions 0644, and then let's try question two here. What happens if we open an empty file, one that has no content, for reading? Explain whether the first call of alt get c on the file returns eof or not, and exactly how if so. Trace the alt f open and alt get c calls to reason through this. And coming back from a pause there, well, alt f open leaves the read buffer empty by setting next equal to buffer and then buff size, as we mentioned already, uh, to uh, zero. So on the first call of alt get c, and I'll bring that up here in a subfile since um, we don't have it in the main notes, not room enough, uh, on lines uh, 23 through 24 here, the test is true, resulting in an alt f flush. Now, that call, in turn, does a read down here, read right here with a uh, zero return, and bat sets the file at EOF flag on line 38. So the alt get c return on line 26 picks that up and returns EOF. Now, tracing through the code like that makes an excellent test question just to... Uh, kind of give you some forewarning there. Okay, question three. If um, alt f open opens a file for writing, then buff size is set to, uh, to the full buff size. The size of our buffer is uh, 1024. Is that always the same then as long as that file is open? Or does it change perhaps for that file? And if so, when? And coming back for my pause. Uh, the answer um, is uh, no, it doesn't change. Um, it's the same throughout the file's open time. The full length of the buffer is always available to queue up output. 
Now, by contrast, a partially filled read call back in the uh, uh, fflush may result in a shorter buff size for a file that is open for reading. Okay, let's move on here to um, lines 6 through 10. Now, these define and initialize the array alt files. Most of the entries, as you can see, set the fd, the first uh, field in the struct, to negative 1, which marks them as available for use by alt f open. But the first three have non-negative fd fields because they represent the guaranteed open file descriptors that have for standard input, output, and for error. And refer back to earlier lectures on those three file descriptors, descriptors 0, 1, and 2. Their next flags and buff size values are also initialized as if they'd been opened by Alt F open for reading or writing, but with one important exception. Question for what is that exception? Which of these three first entries in Alt files does not perfectly match what Alt F open would have initialized it to? Coming back from a pause, what you might have noticed here is that number two has a buff size of one not a buff size of capital buff size 1024 as would have been expected for a file open for writing. So leads us to um, question five. What's the practical impact of that buff size of one? How does it affect the behavior of alt put C calls done on alt files bracket two, the standard error? Coming back from a pause there, in which you might have traced the code a bit, the small buff size means that each care of output is immediately flushed, so nothing stays in the buffer. Um, in particular, uh, line 18 of standard uh, io.c in altputc is uh, always true. Right up here. And we flush on every call. Now this is reasonable for standard error output, which is used only for important error messages that must not be lost by redirection to a file. It's also important that they not be lost because of a program crash that wipes out buffer data before the buffer can be flushed. Reference early lectures, by the way, on subtle problems using debugging printfs due to buffer loss. Now, one could always use literally ampersand alt file 0, ampersand alt files 1, ampersand alt files 2 as the alt file pointers when you want to work with standard input, output, or error respectively. But the library user really isn't supposed to even know about the alt files array except via the alt file pointers that are returned by alt f open. And it would be more convenient to have simple names for these three important alt file pointers. So lines 12 through 14 define alt standard in, alt standard out, and alt standard error for this purpose, pointing to the first three entries of alt files. And anytime we want to specify I.O. on the standard input, output, or error, we just use one of these three globals. Of course, the real standard I.O. libraries, standard in, standard out, and standard error, work exactly the same way. They're just global file pointers to the first three entries of the standard I.O. library's array of files. So let's move on now to Alt F close. This, like its standard I/O analog F close, shuts down an Alt file struct and closes the associated open file. The code is pretty simple. Its main jobs are to flush any remaining buffer content, and then close the uh, open file descriptor, and reset FD to minus one so that Alt file entry can be reused by Alt F open. Uh, here's a quick reality check, by the way. The line 73 call here, Alt F flush, while it's accurate, is slightly wasteful. Why? And what would we do to fix that? And coming back from a pause there, um, calling Alt F flush is unnecessary if the file is open for reading, and it even results in a needless read call. It's better to add an if test here to do this flush only for write files. Question 7. 
The first three elements of alt files were never initialized by altfopen. And programs are not generally responsible for calling close on file descriptors 0, 1, and 2. So do we need to call alt f close on alt standard in, alt standard out, or alt standard error? Why or why not? And you should find yourself worried about one of these in particular. Coming back from a pause, alt standard out is worrisome because it might have unflushed buffer content. Buffer content in alt standard in is just for reading and doesn't need copying to a file. And alt standard error has that one element buffer that gets automatically flushed each time. But alt standard out needs to be flushed before the end of the program. Now, a standard C program includes a F flush on standard out automatically after the end of main. We don't get that courtesy for our alt standard IO library, so we'd have to directly call alt F flush on alt standard out if necessary when the program ends. Now, let's wrap up this sec uh, segment by looking at some of the uh, macros back in altstandardio.h of on lines 24 through, or 25, I'm sorry, through uh, 28 right here. Now, the first two of these, alt put care and alt get care, work like get care and put care of the standard I.O. library, and those are usually implemented as macros calling getc and putc. As you can see, they automatically do an alt putc or alt getc on alt standard out or alt standard in. Doing character gets and puts on alt standard out and alt standard in are so common that having macros for them is convenient. Now, macro alt ungetc, which is the analog of standard I.O.'s ungetc, is more interesting. This one works directly with the alt file pointer fp and expands to all of this stuff here. Read it carefully and answer this question. First, what does it do and what does it return in non-error cases? Also, what error cases does it test for and what does it do for those? Coming back from a pause, as the name suggests, it unreads one character of input, putting said character back into FP buffer, the character C in particular, back into FP buffer, um, and backing up the FP next one byte. So we return as a result of the entire expression the character that was unread, and if FP arrow next is at the start of the buffer, not greater, or if we are trying to uh, unread an EOF, then it leaves the buffer unchanged, does not do this assignment, and instead returns EOF. Now, this is a remarkably useful little macro, as we'll see shortly, but it must be used carefully. So question nine, assuming I've just done a successful alt getc call, and I haven't closed or otherwise disrupted the alt file in question, can I always do an alt ungetc call? And a related question, why did we put the buffer flush in alt getc at the start of the function instead of doing it at the end of the function the way we did in alt putc? Coming back from a pause, uh, the answer is yes, you can always do the alt ungetc call. And an important reason is that the buffer flush is at the start of alt getc. Right there. Alt getc is designed so that it leaves the buffer with at least one used up character so that there's room for unreading one character. After a successful alt getc call, fp greater than, or fp next, I'm sorry, greater than fp buffer is always true. But notice, two alt ungetc calls in a row are not guaranteed to work. If we just started reading through a new buffer, there may be only one character of room to unread a character. The standard AON get C has that same limitation.